course, uh, very happy to have you on, Chant. We love it when you're on. It's about once a year you get get here, but no, it's absolutely, you're looking good. Thank you, mate. Great to be here again. It's good to catch up with Josh. I haven't met Josh before. What a great young fellow he is. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> no, he's good. Good. And it's, a, it's a real... Uh, it, it's, it's like a real wave has come over the game, hasn't it, with this, with this round and uh, so many people doing wonderful things all together. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's very nice. It's like, it is. It's, momentum is gathering. And, and Josh, so we, we saw the great story you did with Aaron last week, but um, it's, it must be sad to be leaving. I mean, the Bulldogs fans, they're filthy. <laughs> Not on you, but the fact that you have to leave. I mean, it's pretty sad, isn't it? Yeah, as we've seen saying last week, it was, it was, it was, it's been tough, you know. Um, something I thought I'd never have to do. But um, in life sometimes I reckon, you know, you sort of got to make big decisions and, and, and I had to make a big one. But I'm really excited for what the future holds. And as I said last week, it's a, it's a different challenge for me and I'm ready to take it on, so I can't wait. I think you'll go well there down like Leichhardt. Yeah. Are, are they going to build a team around you? Are they, are they buying some quality <laughs> players? There's not much no, money, money left. There's not much money left. No, you've got too much money left. Now, we're going to recap the, the wonderful story that you did last week that with Matt Callender. But before we do that, Chief, I've just got to ask you, one of the big things about this round that you were so passionate about was the players walking out and wearing the beaties. And I think you said, when this happens, we will have made it. How emotional was it for you to watch this happening? Erin, I, I, very, very emotional. And I know that Matt Callender and, uh, and Mark Hughes were, were really excited about this because these shots are going to go all around the country. And you think that every play in every game this round are going to blast out the tunnels with those beanies on. What does it say? It says that we're absolutely unified as a game and we're really serious about this brain cancer. And, and see, you know, there's Matty Callender with his family, uh, his kids there that ran out with, uh, with, with Paul Gallen. Just magic stuff. And I certainly hope out of all this, because you guys know Matt Callender just as well mm. as we all, you know, we all do, I hope he's totally overwhelmed with what everyone's doing for him because he deserves it. I think well, he, he is, good, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, looks like he is. All right. Well, Beanie for Brain Cancer Round has, uh, has launched with an overwhelming response and support from the community and everyone watching at home. But we are just getting started. Brain cancer affects many families and brain cancer research desperately needs funding. This is where you can make a big difference. The footy show joined forces with the NRL, the Mark Hughes Foundation and Channel 9 Rugby League boss Matt Callender to get this wonderful campaign off the ground. Matt Callender worked on this show for many years. He actually ran it as EP for a couple of years. 12 months ago, at age 45, Matt was diagnosed with brain cancer, a grade four brain tumour. They don't get any worse than that. In a moment, we'll reveal just how much money you guys have helped us raise so far. But first, here's a recap on Matt Callender's story, the inspiration behind the Beanie for Brain Cancer round. Matt Nan, welcome. So tell me about you living a normal life. Tell me how you found out there was a problem. We'd done, Ann and I had done together, we'd done an ocean swim on the Sunday. I was down in Melbourne, our office down there. I can't remember anything, but they tell me I had a massive seizure. Um, woke up in uh, Royal Hospital in Melbourne. Um, now they discharged me the next day, and um, a couple of weeks later I had some bad headaches, really bad headaches. And we went to um, RPA, and um, they eventually did a CT scan. And then the neurosurgeon came in the morning when we were together and he just said, look, I'm not going to mess around, it's a, it's a pretty bad one. You're going to need a lot of luck, so... Could you believe what was happening to you? I mean, no, it's, it's even it's normal life and all of a sudden, bang. Yeah, out of nowhere. It's, it's, um, it's even, you know, I just feel like I'm talking about someone else even now. 12 months later, still trying to come to grips with it. Your eldest daughter, Maddie, works here. She's a lovely girl. And we keep in contact with her and find out how you're going. And, uh... I ask her, now, how's, how's Matt? And her, her voice, she is bursting with pride that you're her dad. Yeah. Oh, she's just been great. She just deals with everything. She wants to be a part of it. She's been there with you know 90% of our appointments and stuff, yeah. and it's just a great support. Maddie's pretty much been involved from day one. But our three younger ones, 10, eight, and seven, our second little girl who's 10, she, pretty emotional little girl. So she uh, asks questions all the time. So, um, it's all about being honest with them. Tell me about some of the low points. Well, just when, the, the moment when they, he said it was back, you know, to have the second operation, it's just, you know, and you got the kids around, yeah, it's just, it's just seeing, every time I do something with them now, it's just those moments when you think you might miss them that, that really just bring you down. But and you what just... about for you, Ian? Low oh, points? I don't think anyone should have to go through, 
you know, this, this terrible disease, which is basically, you know, the median survival rate is between 12 and 15 months. You can't have low points, you don't have time. I don't have time to be upset and in a ball in the corner. I need to make memories. It's a hard question to ask. Have you thought about your own mortality? Oh, of course, with the kids. It's just, every time I see them now, it's just, it's really hard to contain your emotions. Mm. And thinking that you might miss some of that is the hardest. It's hard to watch, isn't it? it really Yeah, is. he's a good fella. Really good. OK, now, if you guys want to get involved at home, and so many people have already, but there's still so much you can do, all you have to do is go buy a beanie, which will help raise money for brain cancer research. Now, you can buy a beanie from the game on the weekend, look for the stalls in front of the stadiums, or you can head to markhughesfoundation.com.au where you can buy the beanies all year round. You can also grab one from Richie's Super IJ stores in New South Wales or in Queensland. So don't worry if your local IJ is sold out, they will be restocked in the next 24 hours. Now, rural and country areas might take you guys a little bit longer, so don't give up and make sure you pop back in. Or if you just like to make a donation, you can simply jump online and donate every little bit that you can afford to give counts towards such an incredible cause. Now, the goodwill behind this idea is just Phenomenal, we're absolutely blown away. We're pleased to announce that another one of our great sponsors, Chemist Warehouse, they are donating $10,000 as well as Mark Hughes Foundation, so well done to them. Thank you so much for jumping on board. One of your favourite stores, I know. Your favourite chemist. Now, Anne Callender, that's Matt's wife, who we met in the story. Her dad, Don Humphrey, he's donated $5,000 of his own money. Now, they added to the list of some wonderful donations we've already had, including $25,000 each from Hugh Marks at Channel 9 and David Gingell, $10,000 from our great mates at McDonald's, as well as ten grand from the Royal Oak Hotel in Double Bay. That's a great hotel. So well done to everyone. Really Thank you. So, look, we've been absolutely blown away by the groundswell of support for this campaign. The reaction's been incredible. And by raising awareness and funds, we can all do our part to find a cure for this disease. We've only just kicked off the round. I had a target of $400,000, but amazingly, we can announce that already money raised for the Mark Hughes Foundation sits at $843,825. That's just after game one. So that's unbelievable, absolutely fantastic. Now, to add to that, this has got something really special. We've got another generous donation to announce. There's a sensational bloke called Dennis Handlin, who's a terrific mate of ours at the footy show. And he has tremendous respect for Matt Callan. He's a great friend of his. And he happens to be the boss of Sony Music Australia and of a, around half the world. Actually, he's a, <laughs> he's a kingpin. Don't worry about that. He's a legend. Now, Dennis was watching the show last week and he leapt into action, calling us first thing Friday morning with a brand new auction item that you will not believe. Up for grabs now are two tickets to see the one and only Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden. Doesn't get any better than that. Wow. Accommodation and return corners flights. So that's well done, Dennis. You're a champion. That's massive. He's done this all of his own accord. We need to only thank Dennis and his magnificent team at Sony Music here in Australia and the great guys at Qantas and at Show Travel. Piano Man, Uptown Girl, New York, State of Mind. We didn't start the fire. Hit after hit after hit from Billy Joel. So get on now uh, to eBay or to the themarkhughesfoundation.com.au and go for it. We'll be keeping this one open into the first hour of our Big Gold Coast show next week and this could sell for anything. Absolutely brilliant. Well Fantastic. done, Dennis. Thank, thanks to him and Sony. I love right. Billy Joel. Freddie's out there at the ground still. He's got Matt Callender with him, Mark Hughes, Paul Gallon, and hopefully we'll get Jonathan Thurston as well pretty soon. Come in, Freddie. Hello, boys. What about that 843,000? There was 4,000 beanies sold tonight while we're standing out of the front. It has been an absolute success. We'll talk to Gal straight away because he's got to head off and sing the team song. When they came to you about wearing the beanies before the game, what was the players' response? Yeah, we jumped straight on board, obviously, and, um, you know, terrific cause. And over the past couple of months, I sort of hit the shire a little bit with, uh, you know, Brett Kamal, his wife passing, who's only you know, a few years older than myself. So really hit the, the club hard. So we jumped straight on board to, to help out the foundation. And, you now, yesterday I posted a picture on Instagram and a guy messaged me back, you know, his young daughter um, passed away only a few weeks ago. Mate, I was almost in tears. She, she would have been eight or nine years old at most. Uh, her name was Caprice. So, mate, if you're watching out there tonight, you know, dedicated a win to her and, you know, also uh, part of this cause to her as well. You know, a, a terrible, terrible thing, a, a young child dying from this disease. And anything we can do to raise awareness for it and raise money, we'll, we'll ride on board. And, uh, you know, th thanks very much to everyone who's helped out and, and well done to the foundation for doing it. Thanks on the footy show, mate. You've been enormous. Well done, yeah, the yeah. tonight. Thanks, mate. 800.
And 43,000. So uh, overwhelming, mate. It's incredible. It's just going to continue the great work he's done with his foundation. And I think we're really going to make a difference. We're going to take a huge step to finding a cure, which is just fantastic. And as Gal said, every club, as soon as we asked them, we're on board. And it was just fantastic to see so many people wearing beanies here tonight. Can you tell us about the sequence of events that got us to this being around in the NRL? Um, not long after my diagnosis with brain cancer, my first operation, um, I'd known Mark and Paul Harrigan, the chief who's back in the studio for a long time, and I just wanted to make a contribution. I spoke to Mark about trying to have an idea, and we went and saw Todd Greenberg and his team, and straight away they were on board, and every club has been on board and every player, which has been fantastic. Fat man? Yeah, Matty, you, you're actually you're on this, worked on the show for a long time. You're actually EP for a couple of years. Have you got great memories of working on the show with such amazing talent? <laughs> I haven't met a harder worker than you, Fat Sears. <laughs> Please. Do you miss me? I do miss you, champ. You're a great oh, yeah. man. I miss you on the rugby league especially, and we hope to see you back there soon. But Mark Hughes, I want to ask you a question. All this money that's raised, it's, it's obviously going to help in the future. Um, how exactly, where do, where do you, who decides where the money goes? Have you thought about that yet? Absolutely, Fatten. Yeah, we have a scientific committee that make all these decisions, and we're going to we're going to put on a full-time researcher um, who's an expert in brain cancer, full-time, take him away from seeing patients and putting him full-time into full research. And the way we've blown away this five hundred thousand dollar figure, we should be able to look at maybe putting on another one or or extending this guy to five years, so we can really get serious on on getting this research sorted out. Well done. We've just been joined by Jonathan Thurston. JT, you've been a, a fan for a long time. Can you tell us about your experience with the Mark Hughes Foundation? Yeah, I've uh, seen uh, Mark's story a, a few years ago on uh, one of the footy shows, and um, you know, I was really touched by it. And um, got in contact, uh, donated uh, some jerseys and uh, boots and things to raise awareness and obviously raise funds for uh, brain cancer research. So i um, been involved for a few years now and um, will continue to do so. What was it like the players when they were wagging the boonies on before they were running out? Yeah, no, they were all good. They were, you know, no, uh, <laughs> nah, not at all. They were all uh, fully supportive of it. Um, when I spoke to the boys last week about uh, doing it, uh, you know, every player jumped on board, and uh, like Matt said, every club's been outstanding as well, uh, jumping behind this. And you know, that's the power of rugby league. Um, we're making changes uh, with brain cancer research, and that's what we need to do. I want to mark Hughes' best mates, the chief. G'day, boys. And uh, I was going to say, JT, mate, you've been an absolute inspiration in everything you've done so far for the Mark Hughes Foundation, mate. Just amazing what you're doing with the boots for the auction item as well. But, Matty Callender, I want to ask you, mate, from just a thought in your head about this concept about round 11 and now finally seeing it happen and the boys run out in the beanies, just tell us a little bit what's going through your mind. It must have been amazing. It was totally amazing, Chief. I've never felt so, you know, just so proud of that of the whole rugby league community. Just when the players ran out with the beanies on, and to, to, you know, and we sold out of we sold out of beanies at the ground, which was, you know, every everyone coming in, people are buying ten and twenty beanies. And I tell you what, it's what you told me, mate. It's it's why can't we find a cure now? And I think just with this money and the work he's doing with his foundation. Why wait to find a cure? With this money the rugby league community have raised, we're truly going to make a difference, and I think we will find a cure. I really believe you. Well done, Matty. Excellent work. Hey, JT, just one before we go. Um, all Queensland wants to know, you'll be right for Origin 1? Yeah, it should be right. Thanks, Fred. Sweet. Fun. Good on you, champ. <laughs> all right, you've all done great work out there. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks to Matt Callender, Mark Hughes, and Jonathan Thurston and Paul Gallen. Nice work. That, that's a great way to kick off this round. Um, you know, we're all fighting so hard and, you know, I said it might not be able to help people right now, but it's, it's for the future. It all really that money is. and obviously the research is going to take a long time, but with the funding, they talked about the Professor Mark Hughes, and hopefully we can get that done. That's what it's all about. Wouldn't yeah. that be incredible? Yeah. And there are, of course, other ways that you can give money to help in this incredible cause. There are three other auction items. Now, there's only three days left to bid on them, so make sure you check them out. We've got JT's signed boots from the gate where he scored... Point number 2,000 in round two of this year. Now, so that on. Is that because you can't say 2,000? Yep, 2, correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say it. You can't 2, say it. 2,000th. See, exactly. You've got well, a list. You can't say it. Okay, now, so how good are those boots? Now, the next auction item is... 
Okay, I think they're up to like six or seven grand or eight grand already. So you, you can certainly get more than that for something like this. He's a future immortal, well, isn't he? Well, the going to be an immortal, so it'd be good to have his boots. 100%. So make sure you bid on those. For every collector, even if you're not a Cowboys fan, you don't need to be. He's an absolute superstar. Now, there's also been a lot of interest in this next item. Now, this is a fantastic NRL grand final experience. Win a table for 10 in the Immortals room, a pre-game tour with an NRL ambassador of the team sheds before the game. That's exclusive That's access one. right there. Yeah, it is a good one, Bowie. Now, your favourite team's jersey you also get and an experience of a lifetime on the field with the pre-match entertainment. Now, you cannot replicate that. Mm. The auction is available on eBay. Make sure you go check it out. Okay, I think it's sitting at around 12,000 or something now, so you can totally do that. Okay, the P&O Cruise. Three nights in an ocean view room. Great the auction room. update for the P&O Cruise is around 1,500 bucks. That's a total steal. It includes all meals, entertainment activities, and accommodations. So make sure you jump on that. And Chief, this is the cracker one. This is the big money money ticker item. Yeah, no, this is really, really exciting. The, the amount of great blokes going on this uh, trip is just phenomenal. We've got the Johns brothers, the Giddley brothers, we've got Danny Vadiris, you've got Adam McDougall, you've got Malcolm Reilly. Just about everyone ever played there in 97. It's wonderful. So there's two seats available thanks to Flight Centre and Wild Spirit Adventures. And it'll be a trip of a lifetime. Honestly, uh, two things. You, you're going to donate money to a wonderful cause, but you're going to have a trip that money can't buy. So if you want to uh, join some, some really great blokes, including Mark Hughes himself, taking that track up there, please donate or auction on that one. I think I think it's round about 30000 at the I moment. I know. Unbelievable. So that's really great. Thanks so much who's bid on that so far. OK, mm. well, fingers crossed it goes even further than that. OK, now tomorrow on the Today Show, Tim Gilbert will be live from 5.30am at Bronte Public School where Matt and Ann Callender's kids go. Now, it's going to be an awesome morning with him. He's going to have guests from The Voice, some of the Habibs, and a few familiar NRL faces. Now, there'll also be beanies to buy and a big barbecue. Everyone's welcome, so make sure you head on down to Bronte Public School if you can get there for a great cause. Now, you've all seen the players and commentators wearing their beanies. Now, everyone's getting involved by posting their photos on social. It's been so good to see. We've got Sharks players, including Gal, Andrew Fafita, Jimmy Maloney, his whole family actually posed in them. Chad Townsend, Valentine Holmes, Chris Hyington, Wade Graham, legends. JT, Billy Slater, both rocking their beanies. The boys from the Dragons, the Panthers, the Knights. Look at Pete Matowdy, he's there as well. And from our NRL, we had our official State of Origin launch last night where we launched this round as well. So everyone's getting involved. The Burgess boys, I, I have never seen 